guys this is my 1997 80 series it is a 40th anniversary today we're going to do a rig rundown just show you guys how much work has gone into this rig how awesome it is let's get started at the front end this is a 105 series four bar actually it sits a little bit higher some people like it some people don't i don't mind it too much being a 105 series bar i do like the simplistic look of it it's got these led daytime running lights and as you can see, it's also got the indicators built into the bull bar as well. Speaking of indicators, we've also got these aftermarket headlights that are LED, daytime running lights and indicators. So being LED, they are fairly bright, which is good. Moving on, we've got a just a simple 22 inch light bar up the front there. We've also got a 12,000 pound winch down under here which in my opinion does the absolute job. Not that I ever need it because it's an 80 series and you'll never need to pull this thing out of anything. Also got some toe points down here. They're very good and a bash plate as well, just to keep it all safe under there. The bonnet scoop isn't necessarily just for looks. It's actually to cool the engine. These engines get really hot. Um, speaking of engines, I'll show you what's under there. It's not the cleanest of engine bays. Um, I'm not too worried about cleanliness. It, it is a four wheel drive. It's gonna get used on, on dirty tracks. This is a 3582 turbo um, fed in by a stainless four inch pipe. I have just kept it on the cheap side for the air box. It's just a SAS carbon pod filter that's sealed, which is fed in by a Safari snorkel on the side here. I think it breathes pretty well. If you guys have been keeping up with the channel, you'll know all the videos I've done with this turbo upgrade and the intercooler piping. The water to air intercooler is cooled by a radiator at the front, which is a PWR radiator, and it has a fan connected as well. And that's always running constantly with the accessories. So it does cool the air temps down reasonably. However, I think a front-mount intercooler is always gonna be better. Dual batteries, guys has lots of accessories. That's probably one of the things that I do not like about this engine bay is all of the wires. It just looks like spaghetti. That's probably another thing I'll have to fix in the future is just clean up the wiring a bit, um, but it does its job for now. I've tried to use lots of heat protection on the turbo. I've wrapped the downpipe with exhaust wrap and also the turbo has a blanket on it. It does help keep the heat out of the engine bay. And it also does have an external gate down there, which does sound decent when on boost. As far as I'm aware, the engine has never been opened, so it's all standard internals. It's only running five pounds, so not lots of boost. Um, the engine loves it, never had a problem. 380,000 Ks, and it still just purrs like a kitten. Moving on to wheels, suspension, all that good stuff underneath. It's got negative 44 offset rims, which are massive. 315, 75, 16, which is 35s basically. Moving underneath, guys. We have a four inch lift. This lift is actually engineered. These are four inch Dobinson springs and they are the heavy springs. The car also is engineered for a three and a half ton GVM upgrade. It's also got some old school tough dog shocks. I'm unsure of the size, uh, but they are adjustable and they are pretty good. Also got the superior engineering radius arms. I'm six foot two and you know, the bonnet is coming up to the top of my chest. The roof is well above my head, and obviously the rooftop tent is very, very high. So it's quite a big car. I don't think the cameras give it justice of how massive it is. It does have quite an intimidating presence. Moving on to the rear of the car underneath, we do have the four inch heavy springs as well. It's also included with the airbag main airbag suspension. And once again, we've got the Tough Dog adjustable shocks at the back here. We've also got these superior arms at the back as well which are fully adjustable. Just continuing on to the rear and also underneath on the rear guys, I've had to keep the mud flaps long. Being an engineered vehicle for the lift, you are required to have these mud flaps so that the mud flap is no higher than 300 mil from the ground. 
I've also put these chains on there because many times when I went four-wheel driving, the mud flap would grab on the tire and rip the guard off. So these chains just stop that from happening. Just moving up the back underneath, guys, we have a steel sub tank, which is 170 litres. So combined, there is 260 litres of fuel capacity. So having those airbags on the springs really do help hold this weight. This 80 series also has a three inch stainless exhaust all the way through. Have a listen. carrier just a single one nothing crazy so the reason why this rear bar swings out so much is because we modified it to turn into a kitchen I'll show you guys what the kitchen looks like here have a reversing camera on the rear here and also a Hamari's tow bar is rated to three and a half tons which is a lot of weight the previous owner did a lot of towing so that's why he upgraded it that way maybe one of my favorite little mods of the car is the badge here oh, I found this badge at one of my workplaces and also added the turbo as well just to give it a bit more presence on the road so moving on to the back guys we just have some basic drawers on this side here I've got my kitchen set up like I was talking about all of this in here basically hooks on to the rear tire carrier into a kitchen. On the other side, we've got the toolbox, just for the very basic tools that you might need on the tracks. And some other essentials like jump starters, spare bolts, axes, you know, lighters, all that sort of thing. Got an inbuilt compressor to pump up the tires with the lead just in the wing there and just on this side here guys we have a dc plug-in and also usb ports light switch here which turns on the kitchen light over here and also i've put some overhead lights in one for each drawer at night time these are pretty bright this switch here is actually a water pump that's inside this wing which connects up to here, I'll show you. So just in the back guys as well, we also have a 25 litre water tank, which feeds that tap over there. And also a 12 inch sub, just for some nice music when you're either camping or just driving anywhere. Over on this side here, I've got my dual burner cooker, which you'll also see in the video. You guys want to see all the build on this rear end i do have videos that i'll link in the description moving on to the roof of the 80 series as you can see there is a motop rooftop tent up there it is the 135 size rooftop tent i put some max tracks up there just in case i need them if i'm camping on an uneven surface i can put the max tracks on a certain wheel just to level out the car so that when i'm sleeping in the tent it's nice and level so up on top guys we have a 200 watt solar panel which is very slim stays out of the way you barely even know it's there and this is plenty of power to charge my batteries and to keep us afloat when we're camping so i've got my my solar panel plug in just up here with an anderson plug and i have pressed that into the gutter here which runs all the way into the engine bay so it's nice it stays out of the way you barely even know it's there I've also got a 52 inch light bar up here, which spans the whole length of the rooftop tent. And up here, we also have a Bushwhacker 270 awning, which opens up massively, covers the kitchen. It's a great place for shade and it's super durable and sturdy. Inside of the car now, guys, we have upgraded front speakers, which aren't factor on most 80 series. We've got a Pioneer touchscreen head display. Pretty basic, pretty old school, but it does the job. 
five speed manual with a heavy duty clutch. So it handles all the beatings it receives. The fire extinguisher is fairly new. Uh, just in case of a fire. I've also added these rubber mats in there as well because rubber mats, in my opinion, are more superior when you're getting in and out of the car and you're muddy or you have sandy feet. It's so much easier just to shake them out. I've got these very basic seat covers on the front just for protection of the original seats. The original seats are really, really nice. They're in good condition. The previous owner really looked after this car being a 1997 and also a 40th anniversary. It's in really good condition. Center console, I've added this funny eBay pad just because it lets it sit a bit higher so that my elbow is on it while I'm driving. And also it's very soft and nice. Still opens up and has plenty of functionality. Moving on here, we've got our GME UHF. Does the job very nice. And just a so driver's point of view, we have the Red Arc Tow Pro system there. And we also have the Red Arc gauges here we've got a boost gauge and also temperature gauges for the engine exhaust and the intake temperatures just above the glove box we have a link ecu which controls the engine and we have a display of both main and auxiliary batteries just to show their voltage we also have more usb plug-in points here and also back here as well behind the center console for the passengers so up front we've also got front and rear lockers which do a brilliant job. They're Harrop e-lockers, so they're very, very tough. Just moving out the back, you can see how nice the seats are. Barely even used, I feel. Very good condition. And just in here, we have just all your essential recovery gear, like your snatch straps. You've got your, your winch blanket, gloves, shovel, you know, all sorts of goodies in there. Just for peace of mind, I've also got a first aid kit under the front passenger and driver's seat. That's it for this rig rundown, guys. I hope you enjoyed my 80 series. A lot of work has gone into it. Comment below what you guys have done to your cars, your four-wheel drives. Tell me what your favorite mods are so I can learn from them. Catch ya.